Hi, my name is John Campus, founder and CEO at Empist. On today's Tech One Two podcast, we're going to be discussing network security and how protected is your network. Today, I'll be joined by Aaron Osborne, ISG manager at Empist. So let's get started. You think you're safe without a care, but here in Posada. You'd be wise to beware The pike with the spike That lurks in your drawers Or the flying drake that will fill you with horror Yourself! Oh, oi! Oi! Ah! The fuck off! I'm so glad that I could just bring you all together like this. Unbelievable. All right. Well, Aaron, thanks for being in the podcast today. Really happy to have you in the studio. Thanks for having me today. Man, uh... We're talking about an important topic today and, you know, the the foundation of many organizations when we start at looking at just technology. So how important is a network in just the overall security spectrum? Yeah. So, I mean, your network is basically your livelihood. It's what uh, takes uh, your communications from one point to another. It's, uh, you know, back in the old days, you had to carry your pensions and everything else. But now we have supercomputers and that that can communicate those uh, communications a lot faster. It can traverse the whole world in under a second. Uh, so it's it's very amazing, you know, what, what technology can do these days. However, you know, with that, there are bad actors that are going to leverage that and try to harvest that information from us and use it in bad ways either to extort money or to do uh, any kind of harm, whether it be political harm or anything like that. So having a secure network is, is very much, you know, uh, something that you really need to pay attention to. And I, I feel uh, a lot of industries um, with their IT, they're starting to catch up to that sense of things. But there are a lot of them that are kind of behind on that thinking and mentality and think, OK, well, it's just working. It just works. So that's all I care. But, you know, that's really what a bad actor wants to see. Hey, is this something that's neglected and you're not paying attention to where they have a, an easier point of entry? They found a way in, something we missed. Where they could either, you know, hold your files for ransom or, you know, our worst case, you know, use that as a launching point to establish attacks for, you know, other bigger uh, targets. Wow. Wow. So when we, when we look at a network, um, you know, that's obviously the connectivity for an office, what are some of the common common things that you would see or consider standard standard for networks that organizations have today? Yeah, I mean, uh, you you usually want a next generation firewall to protect your edge, uh, which is your main entry point into your environment. Um, you're going to have uh, features like uh, IPS, which is intrusion prevention uh, system. So what that is going to do is it's going to look at your traffic and see if there's any anomalies in that traffic where somebody might be trying to probe or trying to gain access where they they shouldn't be. You're blaming me for the traffic? Should I? Using sometimes uh, even AI to to look at and seeing, hey, is this person really who they are, or is that device what it really is? Mm -hmm. It could be a device that you know what they call uh, there's devices like pineapples, uh, for example. It's basically just a wireless access point that an attacker uses. They throw it on the network, hoping other people will uh, attach to it. They'll see it as a common SSID, they'll attach to it, and then now that attacker has all the information coming into that um, device, and they can read it and do whatever they want with it. You know, I can take whatever I want. When we look at just overall uh, networks and, you know, distributed workforces, because oftentimes organizations, they have, they say, my network is secure. I have all the things that you just mentioned, but they have people working from home. They have people working remotely in other areas of either within the country, outside of the country. I mean, how has the game changed when you look at just the extensions of the networks? Because, you know, when you look at the extension of the network, the way I see it, the extension of the network is all the way to the end user's fingertips. So that's how far we have to get. So how has it changed really, you know, the, the industry and, you know, the things that 
you need to do to protect the networks. Yeah, exactly. Since you don't have a lot of um, users that are necessarily all in the office all the time, you have to extend that footprint, that sec uh, security footprint and fabric outside of your network as well. So you have to, it's a multi-factor approach. It's not just your firewalls, but you need to have uh, software that's running on uh, that endpoint. Um, there needs to be some kind of either filtering, um, securing securing the traffic with a VPN um, to allow the, the traffic that's supposed to get to where it's supposed to go instead of, okay, well, it, it's just floating out on the uh, internet and anybody can just look at that, inspect that traffic. So you look at just really, you said the VPN, just so that before you get into too much detail on it, what, what, how exactly does that uh, serve um, purpose within securing a network. Yeah, so um, so exactly, we have we have the entry points into the network. You know, back in the day, we would just open up, uh, say, for if you needed a remote desktop, you'd open up a port on the firewall. You'd come in through remote desktop, and then there you go. There's your environment. That's not good. Environment. That's not good. That's not good. Okay, that's not good. One, it's not secure, and two, it's an attack point um, that uh, that they can use. Um, you know, they're they're actively looking for you know common ports um, that are exposed on on firewalls. Once they got that, that's one piece of the information they need. The next piece is just a logon. Yeah, they'll the, exploit that exactly. So they're going to use some kind of phishing attack or something like that to get the second piece. Okay, now I'm in your environment. I think I caught one, Doctor Alfred. So. Um, I oftentimes speak with, speak with business owners and I feel, or even just IT managers, and they have this overconfidence that we're secured. Our network, we have next generation firewall, we have 8021X, we have all these safeguards and mechanisms in place. But everybody feels like they're safe and everybody feels like they're okay until they get punched in the face. And we've talked about this as you only need one door open to be burglarized or window open at your home to be burglarized. So you just brought the point of all these different endpoints, all these different entry points. When you look at this, the overall network, so I protected my endpoints, I protected next generation firewall, I have MFA. What about all these other devices on the network? Thermostats, IoT, Internet of Things devices, how do those come into play when you're talking about protecting a network. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and a lot of those devices are made overseas. Um, so we don't know what code is running in the background. They may have back doors into those devices. Mm. If those are just put on the general network along that has access to everything else on your network, there's another entry point, you know, in, into the system. So best thing to do for any kind of IoT devices is to VLAN those off into anything that is not um, needing access to, say, like your servers or any kind of infrastructure on the inside. It's best to put those on a separated network that has just basic Internet-only access that it needs to have. Best you separate from the herd, first sign of trouble. It may look pretty. It may, you know, be able to greet us when we come in the door. It may be able to make us ice cubes, you know, all those yeah. great things that we, uh, conveniences. Um, but then with those, it become a cost. You know, it's like, that was they say, big brother's always watching. And, you know, anybody that can have a little in and grab some of that data um, that's coming off the hay, uh, yeah, this person's gone from seven to four. Mm -hmm. You know, they're shutting their thermostat down from those times. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's useful information. Yeah. Now, hey, not only do I have an entry point, you know, into that, but I've also got information and intel. Maybe now's a good time to go check out that person's yeah. home while they're not there. <laughs> All right, so so let's let's just say they're they're not being used. Um, you know, we want want to we want to make sure that we're buying products through trusted sources because things can be altered, and whether they're coming from a nation state or even here locally, um, we still want to protect it. We don't want to let our guard down, um, but. It isn't just the endpoints, the users, because oftentimes it's we're, we need to protect the users. We need to protect the endpoints, the servers, the the network infrastructure. Each one of those IoT devices is another entry point. And whether they're being used, we're not suggesting that they're all being used for malicious purposes. But if they're not being maintained the same way that um, the endpoint, let's say a user's laptop is being maintained, where you mentioned some EDR, you mentioned some monitoring, those are just kind of off on their own. Things could be happening on those devices without the knowledge of the IT administrator. Kind of things. Things that make me feel annoyed. 
let's uh, change directions a little bit and talk about social engineering. You mentioned phishing a bit in social engineering. So let's say a user gets social engineered. Um, let's say, you know, they get attacked. Um, an adversary ha- now has access to their system. From a network perspective, how could you limit um, the impact that that person can have? I mean, you mentioned VLANing earlier. You mentioned some tools. But uh, what are some ways that you can protect the network to in the event that something does happen? Or someone does gain unauthorized access, how can you limit what they can do? Yeah, uh, so on a lot of those, like uh, I mentioned, a tool that's uh, Sentinel One. So um, that that tool specifically, if we know that, if we see the anomalies that it's reporting back, uh, we have uh, tools where we can actually just shut that machine down, mm-hmm. kill it off the network, contain and it, contain yeah. it, and and allow it allow us to examine and do some forensics on it and see where that is. Let's go kill that son of a bitch. So let's say uh, a company, they, they have no physical office, they have no network. Um, how, do you, how would you protect the, the endpoints? We mentioned some software, but um, I think we're in agreement here. You would agree that a VPN um, should be mandatory um, for any type of uh, web traffic and activity, regardless if you have a physical office that you're connecting to. By the way, travel tip, you should probably download a VPN on your phone just so that the government can't track you while we're abroad. But it, there isn't a single solution because you've just mentioned a number of things that need to happen and there's safeguards. And ultimately, the only thing that we can do is mitigate the risk. We'll never eliminate it. Right. But if you can't eliminate the risk, wouldn't you rather know that that risk exists and be able to see what's happening? And that's by doing some of the things that you talked about today. You, at least you can have visibility into what's happening so that if something does happen, you can at least go back and say, yes, this is exactly hap- this is exactly what happened versus just guessing and hoping that nothing happened when it actually did. Um, so the um, w- what about on the mobile device side? So we talked a little. We talked about endpoints, and endpoint could be considered a mobile device. Um, what about these mobile phones that are being used to also access either company resources or cloud applications? Yeah, uh, and, and unfortunately, you know, we see a lot of times they're uh, what do you call BYODs or bring your own devices. Um, a lot of corporations aren't paying for that cell phone or tablet. They're cheap. It's just using a common device that a person uses for their everyday calling and and uh, looking up social media and, and those things on their uh, phone. So there there are tools that you can use, uh, like mobile device managers, um, that can help protect that device. Um, Intune's another uh, mm-hmm. solution that can be used uh, on those that will help Uh, enforce certain policies on that phone Um, so to help protect it I mean obviously is anything going to be 100% secure no but it gives you uh, the best uh, ability to examine that device as well as making sure that it's locked down as as much as it can be I mean yeah I mean they they all say the, the best security is you take your device you put it in a concrete tomb bury it six feet down with no connections that's going to be secure, but are you going to be able to check your uh, Facebook uh, friends, you know, and everything yeah. else on that? So yeah. it's not practical. It's a risk that we have to, you know, live with, you know, and, you know, it's just like, you know, driving, you know, you have the risk of, you know, getting in an accident. It's the same way with security. You know, you, you have those risks as something you have to assume, but you can do steps to mitigate that risk as best as possible. Yeah. Well, perfect. I mean, you mentioned mitigating the risk. Um, you need to know what that risk is, what the risk what risks exist so that you can make an informed decision. And yes, nobody wants to go back to pen and paper. Um, you have to balance that between, um, you know, being able to work, being able to, uh, um, you know, go about your day-to-day versus um, the risk of uh, cyber security. So um, I think we're, we're wrapping up here. We're pretty much out of time. But um, anything that you'd like to give our audience um, um, as some closing thoughts? Do you have any uh, words of wisdom for your growing group of fans? Yeah, I mean, just just kind of uh, just look at the network uh, as you know as a tool. It just like with all tools, you got to keep them sharp. You got to make sure they're maintained correctly, um, and then you know they'll give a lifelong of, of service uh, for you as well. And then also uh, the the main thing is the human element of it too. Always always look at the human element. Train, train people on security. You know, make sure that you're being proactive on things like that. If you end your training now, if you choose the quick and easy path, as Vader did, 
you will become an agent of evil. Thank you for joining our podcast today. We were discussing a very important topic about network security and so happy to have our resident expert, Aaron Osborne, in the studio today. Look forward to seeing you on our next one. See you soon.